Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good to see you. Wherever you are and whatever time zone you may be, thank you for joining me in Listen Up Coffee Time. I prepared black coffee for you. That's, oh, that's okay with you. We begin a new series on the Lord's Prayer and the quick review of the last episode. Matthew 6, 5 through 8. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to, stand, they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. In this short passage, Jesus warned us about wrong ways to pray with the wrong words. And this is something we already shared, but I'm just uh, doing a little uh, review. These are some of the wrong, pray, uh, wrong ways to pray with the wrong motives. Pray in public, standing on the corner, open corner, or in the church to be seen by people. Pray to show up how well they pray to receive praises from people. Pray with many words to show up how religious and how knowledgeable they are. Pray with people in their minds rather than God in their minds. Pray to be seen by people rather than to be seen and heard by God. Pray in wrong ways with wrong motives that cancel out rewards from God. Pray with the belief that many words are required to be heard by God. In short, pray without faith. Pray and pray by keep asking God about what you want without acknowledging that God already knows what you need before you ask Him. In short, once again, pray without faith. These are some of the things that you should not do. After pointing out the wrong ways to pray with the wrong motives, Jesus warns us sternly in Matthew 6, 8, not to be like these religious people. Do not be like them. Then Jesus taught us the proper godly way to pray to God with the proper motives and perspective by begin saying this, this, is how you should pray, as recorded in Matthew 6, 9-13. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Among 66 books, 1,189 chapters and 31,102 verses in the Bible, this is the only prayer Jesus taught us explicitly to pray with a proper godly perspective. Then, why is it called the Lord's Prayer? Do we call this Lord's Prayer because Jesus prayed like this? Or is it because Jesus taught us to pray like this? Jesus did not pray like this, for he is the sinless man and did not have to pray, forgive us our debts. But Jesus taught us to pray like this, for we are sinners by nature. Therefore, we call this the Lord's Prayer, not because this is the way and how Jesus prayed, but rather this is how Jesus taught us to pray. As such, this is a perfect prayer, and once you understand the structure and the deep meaning of the prayer, then you'll begin to appreciate why Jesus taught us this and how we should approach God with what kind of mindset and faith. So, let's look at some important points in this prayer. In this short prayer, Jesus used the word we, are, and us nine times. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. 
Whenever Jesus emphasizes certain words or concepts many, many times, then you know it must be significant. The Lord's prayer is not just a personal prayer, meaning lifting up my personal prayer to God for my benefit only, but it's also a communal prayer. In other words, establish personal, vertical relationship with God first, and then with that relationship firmly in place, build horizontal relationship with our neighbor by praying for yourself and for your neighbor. This is so much like what Jesus taught us about the greatest command, commandments of the law. Matthew 22, 37 to 40, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the laws and the prophet hang on these two commandments. Two simple commands. Love the Lord your God first and love your neighbor as yourself, as was commanded in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 6, 5. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And Leviticus 19, 18. Do not seek revenge or bear grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord, he would declare. This is what I call the umbrella model. Umbrella model? What is umbrella model? model? Simply speaking, it's that establishing your personal vertical relationship with God the Father first through Jesus Christ, then with that vertical relationship firmly in place, build horizontal relationship not only with the neighbor but with the entire creation with God's help. Lord willing, I'll explain this in detail later on, but this is a simple summary of the umbrella model. Build vertical relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ, and with God's help, build horizontal relationship with the creation, including neighbors. Umbrella model. Therefore, the Lord's prayer is not just a personal prayer, meaning lifting up my personal prayer to God for my benefit only, but it's also a communal prayer also. In other words, establish personal vertical relationship with God first, then with a, uh, a firmly in place, with a relationship firmly in place, Build horizontal relationship with your neighbor by praying for yourself and for your neighbor, much like what Jesus taught us about the greater commandments of the law. Then, how is the Lord's prayer structured? I'll explain this next time. As we close, I have a daily homework and a realization application. Daily homework. Please watch today's episode at least a few more times and please share with others. And the realization application, please recommit to exalt God as the Lord in your life, no matter what, and live it out, no matter what. If you have prayed the way Jesus warned us not to, then please surrender, repent, and let us begin again with a godly paradigm shift to acknowledge God's absolute Lordship. Amen? As we close, would you mind repeating after me as I lead you to a prayer? Precious Father, Please forgive me for praying to you with the wrong motives and wrong perspectives. I repent of my selfish perspective and my twisted motives. Please forgive me and please teach me the proper way to pray to you and the proper way to build relationship with you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Listen up, Coffee Time is found on Just Jesus' YouTube channel. I want to invite you to grow together as we listen to the heart of God, to the word of God. Everyone, we love you, and we'll see you next time. God bless you. I'm the sun, and I'm your sunflower.